If you think that golf, lax, gossip, rumors, and competition like the rest of sports, you definitely need to watch this video to see the fresh gossip coming out of the golf world. It's much more than hitting balls to land in holes. Golf now has the public divided and the players questioning their choices. So what exactly is happening? The PGA Tour has been the long established organizer of the main professional golf tours in the United States and North America. But for the last two years, rumors have been floating that a competing professional golf league is emerging that is going to be backed by Saudi Arabia. Because no confirmed announcements were made, this rumor storm has been at a distance from the golfing world, discussed only in whispers and hushes. However, the threat was never gone and in the last few months these rumors have been getting a lot of voice and traction. And now it is official. The Saudi Professional Golf League is confirmed. The $2.9 billion dollars worth of Saudi Professional League is finally happening. It might be launched around next month and it's going to change the golf landscape for sure. With the Saudi League finally turning into a reality, there are lots and lots of questions arising. Who will join the new league? Is Saudi Arabia buying top golf players? And most important of all, do we see a possible fissure happening in professional golf? Are we on the verge of a raging golf war? Let's find answers to all these questions and see what we know and what we don't. When did this begin? The idea of having a separate league from the PGA Tour always appealed to many. Even in the mid 1990s, former world number one Greg Norman and media tycoon Rupert Murdoch tried to form a World Golf Tour. It featured the top players competing in an eight event series. The tour was even able to bag a television contract, but it didn't stay for long. Many other world tours have come and gone without much fanfare. Now, coming back to the Saudi tour, the rumors started surfacing during the last few months of the 2019. The PGA Tour Commissioner, Jay Monahan, even issued a warning in January 2020 that any golf player who went on joining a rival league would face suspension and possibly a lifelong ban. But would such a warning stop players from joining a league with possibly a lot of money? Let's see. So what do we know about the Saudi Golf League so far? Named as the Super Golf League, although the name is not confirmed yet, it has contacted almost every one of the top golf players. Keep watching this video to find out who's joined the league and who has publicly badmouthed it. There's some hot tea right there. The Super Golf League has not yet announced any formal blueprint for what the league might look like. That means no official word on the number of players, the number of tournaments, the formats of the tournaments, where the tournaments will be played, or the official partners sponsoring the league. What we do know is that the Saudi league is offering astounding sums of money to every top golfer out there to ditch the PGA Tour. On an unofficial note, Kramer Hickok, an American professional golfer, said in a podcast that there are huge amounts of money involved. The league reportedly will have 12 to 14 events filled by 40 players. 10 of those 14 events will be in the United States. There would be no stress of missing a cut anymore, and there would be a huge bonus. Hickok even claimed that 17 big names have already joined the league. Quite a deal breaker, huh? The reports coming in on what golfers are being offered are eye-opening. Bryson DeChambeau, the winner of the 2020 US Open, was offered around $200 million to be the poster boy, a figure he has turned down. Ian Poulter was reportedly offered nearly $30 million. Now, on one side, we have humongous money, and on the other, we've got loyalty to a long-established institution. What would the golfers choose? When we previously said about the golf world getting divided, this is what we're talking about. But why is the Saudi Golf League so controversial? The Public Investment Fund, PIF, is a financial arm of the Saudi Arabia government, which has been accused of numerous human rights violations. To improve its reputation, especially in the Western world, Saudi Arabia has heavily invested in a number of sporting organizations and events. Popularly, this practice is known as sports washing, in which individuals, groups, or organizations do the same to restore their tarnished reputation. This exercise, particularly when done by state-run groups, is considered a form of propaganda to turn away the public's attention from its wrongdoings. If you go back into history, the most well-known example
example of sports washing was when Nazi Germany hosted the 1936 Summer Olympics. Saudi Arabia has recently hosted motorsports, soccer, boxing, tennis, wrestling, and many other sports tournaments. Since 2019, the country has hosted the Saudi International that has drawn some of the big names in golf, who are paid quite a good sum for their appearance only. But what is Saudi Arabia trying to improve? Remember that the Saudi government was linked to the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, a journalist of the Washington Post back in 2019? He was lured to the Saudi consulate building to provide him papers for his upcoming wedding, and then he was injected with a large amount of a drug. The Saudi government denied any involvement and tried hard to clear all evidence. So yeah, there's bad blood. Scary. Now coming back, which players are joining the Saudi Golf League? Australian great Greg Norman has been a driving force of the proposed league. Lee Westwood, an English golfer, has come close as any player to publicly acknowledging his involvement. Though he hasn't gone on record to announce his affiliation, he did say he had signed an NDA during the Saudi International. In the 2021 PGA, Westwood also said that a big offer like this would be hard to turn down at his age. Dustin Johnson, an American professional golfer, also had similar views when being asked about receiving an offer from Saudi International. Also, Adam Scott, who was ranked the world's number one professional golfer in 2014, said at the 2022 Genesis that he's in talks with the Saudi League. Six-time major champion Phil Mickelson said that he's willing to join the Super Golf League despite having concerns over the kingdom's human rights violations, as people are even executed there for being gay. But he would be joining the league in order to reshape how the PGA Tour operates, and also because this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Mickelson is particularly keen to see players get possession of their social media rights and profit from them, as currently they're owned by the PGA Tour. In his words, he called this as PGA's obnoxious greed. What players have said they don't want to be involved with the Super Golf League? Rory McIlroy, a former world number one in the official world golf ranking, called it the not-so-super league, and said, I'm so sick of it. He also suggested that only older players past their prime looking for the massive paycheck are willing to join the rival league. John Rahm, the top-ranked men's golfer, also did not support the league. He said that he's in golf for the love of it and the overwhelming numbers aren't going to impress him. Colin Morikawa also echoed similar thoughts. Many other players have expressed support for the PGA Tour. Most importantly, the golfer who has been looked up to as an idol by all the young players. Yes, we're talking about Tiger Woods. For for Woods, the PGA Tour is his legacy. Also, the hottest young star, the 25-year-old Colin Morikawa, shook his head when asked about his stance on the new rival league. With prospects of a new league, golfers naturally have mixed opinions. Ethics and morals aside, a divided world could have massive ramifications in golf. The sport's relevance and, to an extent, existence could be at stake. Other related golf news. While we're discussing golf, let's go through some recent golf news coming fresh and hot that you might be interested in as well. Aussie golf star pulls off a shoey. The 25-year-old Aussie golf star Hannah Green had her first professional tournament win in the Vic Open in Australia. After she was handed the Vic Open trophy, Green did a shoey, which is a popular celebration style in Australia. She took off one of her shoes, poured some champagne into her shoe, and drank it up. Justin Thomas calls Phil Mickelson's statement an egotistical statement. As we told earlier, Phil Mickelson had been quite vocal in his support for the Saudi League. He called out the PGA Tour multiple times. Justin Thomas, the former world number one, has called this an egotistical statement. Thomas added that Mickelson had done a lot of great things for the PGA Tour, but if he and others want to explore the new league, nobody is stopping them. And that's a wrap for this video. What did you think about the Saudi-backed Super Golf League? What would you do if given such an opportunity? Do let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and click the subscribe button for more videos like this. See you in the next one.